Hey guys, it's Leilani here, and we're so excited that you've decided to tune in this morning to our Easter celebration. If this is your first or second time tuning in, we want to let you know what to expect about our service. You can expect a 75-minute worship service. You can expect a practical message, passionate music, and a way to connect with God and our community through prayer. You might see the word Happy Sabbath or the greeting Happy Sabbath in the comments. And we want to let you know that that's just a way for us to celebrate the day of rest that God has given us. We want to also remind you to connect with us. There's a connection card right in our description box. So take a second and go ahead and fill that out. Let us know that you're here. We want to connect with you. Whether you are new or part of our community, one of the things we want you to do is go ahead and share this service with your family and friends. Last but not least, let's get ready to worship together. Good morning. So as we get ready now to head into our worship, um, we invite you to do something different. In a world where everybody seems to be using their words to harm or to criticize or to put down, we want to do something. Uh, today we want to use our words to build people up, to bless them. And in the Bible, it, the words were often used to bless others around them. Uh, so what we want you to do as we get started here, uh, to kind of get centered in what's going to take place, uh, just in the comment section here, just tag somebody that you want to pray a prayer of blessing over. Um, right there, Tag their name in the comments and just say, hey, I'm praying a prayer of blessing over you. Uh, today I'm praying a prayer of blessing over you. Um, whether that's somebody who goes to our church, somebody at your workplace, uh, someone that uh, within your family, within your sphere of influence, um, just let them know, hey, I want you to know I'm praying a prayer of blessing over you um, so that they could be encouraged in a time when people are needing encouragement. And then moving forward here, we're going to sing a song of blessing over everyone who's listening here uh, to get started and I I want you to just be open into the idea that God is going to do something significant today that God is going to move in a special way uh, whether that's you're in a place where there's noise running around and uh, maybe you're scrolling through uh, Instagram or uh, you have a child pulling on your uh, shirt <laughs> pulling on your shirt or your pants uh, at this moment, I want to just invite you just take a breath and center yourself in the belief that God is going to be here and he has something to say specifically to you. These words straight from the Bible. The Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord turn his face toward you and give you peace that's our prayer today the lord bless you for anyone who's listening and keep you his face shine upon me and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give me peace. If you agree, say Amen.
prayer today. Amen. take a minute here and just be more and even more specific or intentional in what we say here. Here we go. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May His favor be upon you, and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May His presence go before you, and behind you, and beside you, all around you, and within with you in the morning, in the evening, where you're coming and you're going, in your weeping and rejoicing, He is for you, 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 He is for you.
tell the story. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my doom. Till I met you. Tell your story. I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide Truth is, it was my doom Till I met you You call my name Resurrected King. How did things shift? Tell your story. Here we go. I needed rescue. My sin was heavy. But chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love the air that I'm breathing I have a future My eyes are open Cause when you call my name thing is, that same God who resurrected you from the grave in all of your dark places, that same God who brought you to life in your worst times, he's that same God alive today and he wants to do it again. So let's continue our testimony here saying, say I've seen you move, testify. I've seen you move, you move the mountains and I believe. I'll see you do it again You made a way Where there was no way And I believe I see you do I see you move I see you move Yes You move the mountains And I believe I'll see you 
I've known you as a father, I lie. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. So all my life, all my life, you have been faithful. Man, tell your story. And all my life, you have been so, so good. Of the goodness of God. And no matter where you are, even if you think you're too far, His goodness still chases after you. Your goodness, your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me With my life laid down Surrender now I give you everything Cause your goodness Your goodness is running after It's running after me God bless in your goodness Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness Your goodness is running after Running out with my life laid down. With my life laid down. Yes, I've surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness, is, your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is, your goodness is running after. It's running after me. But I will sing 
of the goodness of God. Good morning and a happy Sabbath, everyone. I'm so excited to be with you as we celebrate our resurrection weekend. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he came and he died on the cross and he rose again. That lets us know we serve an amazing and powerful God. So this morning, let's just take some time to go before him and thank him for his many blessings. Father God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being amazing, God. Thank you for coming to die on the cross and rising again, Lord, giving us that hope that you will come back one day to take us to heaven. So Lord, we just want to say thank you. Father God, thank you so much for protecting us as we go about. Some of us are at home. Some of us have to travel because we're essential workers, Lord. And I just want to say thank you for protecting us from all harm and danger. Lord, for those essential workers, especially those that are in the hospital, Lord, I ask you to please protect them. Be that extra layer of PPE, Lord. Lord, for those that are facing illness and at this moment, our concern about their health, Lord. You are the great physician. There is nothing too hard for you to do. So right now, at this moment, Father God, I ask you to please be with those that are in the hospital, those that are at home, Lord, wherever they may be, I ask you to please be with them. Lord, there are many people that are facing anxiety. There's so many things that are unsure, Lord, um, of where we are in society, just not knowing whether it's a job situation being furloughed or are they losing a job or is there going to be enough money? Lord, you care about everything. If you care about the simple things, Lord, I know you care about these great things that are on our minds. So, Lord, I ask you right now to please be with anybody that may have things on their hearts that they're concerned about. Lord, you let us know as we celebrate this weekend that you have all power over everything. As you rose and you conquered everything, that lets us know that you can conquer anything that we may be going through. So, Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for being an awesome God. Thank you so much for caring about everything that's on our hearts. So, Lord, right now we ask you to please prepare our hearts as we hear the word from your servant. In your holy name we pray, amen. This past week, Kara, Everly, and I celebrated Everly's first birthday, and we did it in spectacular fashion. Okay, well, we were home, just the three of us, because everyone is in home quarantine, which really feels more like we're in house arrest. You can't go anywhere unless it's absolutely essential. But we had to celebrate her first birthday, and while we were a little bit sad that we couldn't be with family. I mean, my family was going to come in. Kara's family was going to come in. We were going to invite the entire church to come into our house. <laughs> but we wanted just to have a party to celebrate this milestone, mostly for us as parents, because let's be real, Everly's not going to remember any of it. We'll show her home videos, but she won't remember any of it. But one of the things that I'm most proud of is that your pastor, me, made this very special donut pinata because for us donuts it have a special place in our heart and we wanted it to be special and so we, we had this pinata when, when Kara and I got married um, we also had a pinata just kind of as a way to s symbolically represent you know my culture you know one of the things we come to realize is with everything that's going on all around us I mean, everything is changing everything is different we don't really know how long it's gonna be different for. One of the things that's painfully evident for us that's different is that we're not gathered together at our 301 Bowton Road location. I know many of us thought that when Easter came this year that we would hopefully be together and worship together. And I know as a staff we talked about how amazing we could make Easter if that was the day that we came back to worship together. And we were looking forward to it because we thought like, how amazing would it be that, you know, we've had to stay at home and self quarantine for the most part, but then on the resurrection weekend, we're gonna come together and we're not only gonna celebrate the resurrection, but we're gonna praise God and thank um, God and be present to each other that we were together again. But clearly we're not. Some of us are in home. Some of you are maybe at work if you're an essential worker. Um, wherever you are, you realize that like we're still not together. 
But I take courage in something that I read in the Bible this past week. In the Gospel of John, chapter 20, it says that on the day that Jesus was resurrected, before the disciples knew it, they were meeting in a room behind locked doors because they were afraid that what happened to Jesus was going to happen to them. And they were meeting in a home, praying, not unlike what we're experiencing today. And the Bible tells us that Jesus comes to them and he shows them his hands and he gives them his peace. Like Jesus comes to them and tells them like, you don't have to be afraid. Like you don't have to worry. You don't have to have anxiety. Let me give you my peace. Like for the first time they realized that everything that Jesus had been saying. See, Jesus had been talking about how he would die and then be resurrected. But they didn't catch that. I mean, so much so that many of his followers were, were just like, man, we hoped he was the one that would rescue us. We hoped that this one was the Messiah. But I guess we were wrong. But Jesus comes to them in the midst of their fear, in the midst of the unknown, in the midst of what might happen tomorrow. And Jesus gives them his peace. And the very same power that Jesus gave them Jesus is giving to us, even though we're not meeting at our church building. Because the reality is, is that the church is not a building. The church is who you are. You and I together, Christians all over the world, we are the church. And regardless of whatever is happening all around us, the church does not stop because the Bible tells us that the mystery of God is that Jesus is in you. And so we're the church. And so while we have to worship from home or wherever we are, that will not stop us from proclaiming and confessing that Jesus is Lord. So we've come to the very last day of Jesus' life on earth. We've been looking over the last seven weeks at the different days in the last week of Jesus' life because we believe that the last week of Jesus' life like he was only going to give us the most fire teachings and what, we're gonna, what was going to be the most important teachings for our lives in 2020. And so much of what Jesus teaches us seems backwards to the world. It seems upside down. And yet we believe that if we truly follow the way of Jesus, like we're going to live the best possible life. And so we've come to the final day in Jesus' life. Sunday, the day of the resurrection. And I want to read from Mark 16, verse 1 through 8, just the story of what happens. And then we're going to look at some parallels about how important this is for us today. So Mark 16, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. Early on in the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large, and already had been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Don't be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Look there in the place where they had laid him. But go and tell the disciples and Peter and everyone else that they will see him soon. So think about this for just a moment. These women come to this tomb to give Jesus the proper preparation after death. They wanted to bury Jesus properly and anoint him and do all the things that they had to do. But this young man, who I believe was an angel, he says, there's no need to be alarmed. There's no need to worry. There's no need to fear. The Jesus who was crucified that you're looking for, he is risen. So in the Christian world, oftentimes when we say he is risen, the congregation will generally respond by saying he is risen indeed. Now I won't be able to hear you, but can we just practice that for a moment so that, so that when we come back together in several weeks, hopefully, we'll be able to affirm and confess what has been true. So I'm going to say, He is risen, and I want you to say, He is risen indeed. Ready? He is risen. Did you say it? Did you do it? Let's do that one more time. He is 
risen. You see, what's so powerful about that statement is that the one who has the power to give resurrection to Jesus is the same power that is available to you today. You see, we often think about resurrection as just something that happens to Jesus, that it's, it's a part of our Christian story. But what's truly powerful about the resurrection is that the one who does this is the very same one who wants to give you his very same power today. You know, so many times in our lives, we go through things in our lives that feel like death. If you've ever been through a divorce, if you're going through marital problems or relationship problems, Maybe you have a debt that's so high you don't know how you're going to get out of it. Maybe you're having problems with your family. Maybe you've lost a job. Maybe you've caught a disease. (laughs) Whatever it is, and you're feeling like this must be what death feels like. Remember that the central story of our faith is that after death comes resurrection. And the power of God that resurrects Jesus from the dead isn't just something that was reserved for 2,000 years ago, but it's the very same power that God is wanting to breathe into your life. Because when we look at the story of Scripture, the God who breathes life into existence is the same God who breathes life into the the dead body of Jesus to resurrect Him and is the same God who is breathing into your life today words of hope, words of joy, words of peace, words of comfort, of hope and love and joy. You see, that power isn't just relegated to stories of old, but God is wanting to create resurrections in your life today. And some of you might be asking, but pastor, I'm alive. And that's true. But if there's ever been a destructive habit in your life, Maybe one of the darkest moments in your life and the sins that you have committed, that feels like death. And the Bible tells us that we have been enslaved to sin, but Jesus, through his death on the cross, he frees us from the power of sin. And so we look for these moments of little resurrections in our lives. And I got to tell you that the, the sure way to be able to see those moments in your life is only when you look back over your life And you begin to realize that God had been present in even the darkest moments of your life. And he didn't abandon you. You know, when the Bible writers, they write things very intentionally. And we believe that the Bible was inspired by God and God used men to be able to write these stories so that thousands of years later, we would be reading them and understanding them. And what's powerful about the story in Mark is that when this young man who's wearing all white says, he has risen, he is not here, he says, look there where he had been laid. What he's saying is, look where he just had been, past tense. So when you look back on your life and you begin to realize, wow, like that divorce, that death in the family, that lost job, that financial situation that felt like our back was against the wall, the marital problem that you thought was going to end in divorce, but didn't, all of those little moments, you begin to realize that God was breathing resurrection into your life. You see, God isn't reserving his power for himself. But we see time and time again that God is giving you this power, this breath, this resurrection. And I want to look at a story in Exodus, just one of two verses in Exodus that remind us that Oftentimes we have to look back where where we were so that we can actually see where God was. And in Exodus chapter 33, verse 22, Moses is standing on that mountain of God. Moses was getting weary. He was anxious. He was worried. He was afraid. The people that he had led out of Egypt were like about to form a mutiny and revolt against him. And so Moses comes to God and he says, look, The world is crazy. Everything seems to be going awry. Everything is uncertain. People are upset. People are angry. People are fearful. And he says, God, if you will just show me your face, show me your glory, show me that that you still want me to do this so that I can go and tell these people you've told me to lead that you're still the real deal. Just show me your face. And God says, after much conversation, he says, okay, 
I'll show you my glory. But here's what he says in Exodus 33, verse 22. He says, while my glory passes, which is his presence, his essence, his, the reality of what God is, because we know that God is beyond anything we could comprehend. But he says, while my glory passes by you, I will put you in the cleft of a rock. I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my hand away and you shall see my back. Which the ancient rabbis would say that to see the back of God is to see where God has just been. You know, sometimes we have to look back to be able to see the presence of God. So when we go back to the story of Jesus' resurrection and this young man wearing all white says, look where Jesus had been laid, where he just was, is echoing the words of God telling Moses that you will be able to see where I just was. So when we look back over your life, you begin to see that this power of this little and small resurrections in your life haven't just been a fluke of coincidence. It wasn't just luck, but it was God orchestrating his faith and his power and his sovereignty. Sovereignty is that word we use where we believe that God is working for your good, that whatever is meant for evil, God turns to good for us. You begin to see that God has been working, maneuvering, massaging moments in your life so that we could get to the moment where we begin to realize God has been present all along. I just wasn't aware of that. And so the very same power that resurrects Jesus is the same power that is available to you today. And oftentimes people like to get into a debate about whether Jesus was really resurrected or not. And the debate basically goes like this. The people that don't believe that Jesus was resurrected is because they say like resurrection is impossible. You can't bring someone back to life. Now, I've worked in a hospital setting for almost six years, and I've seen a lot of death. In fact, that's one of the main reasons why we get called in, is to be with families and comfort them. And I can tell you that in six years of hospital life, I've never seen any resurrections. I've seen resuscitations. I've seen people who have come in and CPR has been administered to them, and they're given, in a sense, their life back. But it's quick, it's fast. Like, you can't wait minutes for this to happen. But resurrections, I haven't seen. I still remember one time getting called in for someone who passed away, and it was sudden, it was unexpected. And I still remember the, the mother of this patient just pounding on his chest, telling him, wake up, wake up, wake up. See, the problem we have such a hard time with death is because it's so final. Now, I know that we believe that one day there'll be the day of the great resurrection where Jesus returns and he will resurrect all those who have believed in him into this new life. But in this life, while we're still here, resurrections just don't happen. So when people say that resurrection is impossible, they're right. But it's not impossible for God. And the power that raises Jesus from the dead is the same power that is bringing life and words of hope and resurrection into your life now. And we love impossible things. How many times have you logged into your student loans to pay your student loan hoping maybe today something happened and the balance is zero? And some of you are laughing because you know you've thought about that before. Right? It's that moment when you go and take out the, and you go to your mailbox to get your mail and you think, maybe today I'll find a check. Like that actually, not lying, this is not pastoral hyperbole. I remember one time going to my mailbox when I was living in California and I thought to myself, like, I, like I'm going to think only positive thoughts. Like one day I'm good, the impossible is going to happen. There's going to be a check in the mail because listen, I have heard pastor after pastor tell me how they have like received money like at the nick of time when they needed it. And so I remember coming out there one time, I opened up my mail, and there was a check. And it was like $130 or, or something like that. It wasn't like astronomical. But I, like, I remember telling Kara, like, Kara, like, there, I got money. There's a, there's a check. Like, this is the real deal. And, and it wasn't a scam. I, I would later, I'd later go to find out that um, 
like we were switching retirement things and something happened and so I was, it was really my own money that I was paying into my retirement thing but there was something that changed and they were just basically sending me my money back for a couple of weeks because this happened several times. But said, we, we love the impossible. We, we, we hold on to impossible things because we believe like, like it can happen and it's not just because we, we, we're wishful thinking kind of people. It's because the central story of our faith is that God orchestrates impossible things in the lives of his people, not just so that our lives can be better, but because by doing so, God is glorified. And so I'll say it again, the very power that raised Jesus from the dead, that same power is available for you today in whatever it is that you are going through. In John chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus says, like, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live. Jesus says all sorts of things. He would also say things like, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. And, and what Jesus was really saying is, he was giving you and us whatever metaphor you need in order to understand that Jesus in his presence, he can give you everything that you need to live life abundantly. So when Jesus tells his followers, like, I am the resurrection and the life, he said that because his friend Lazarus, and the Bible tells us that Lazarus was one of his best friends, and he waits three days, or I forget how long it was, to come to, to, to him. And his sister Mary and Martha had said, like, Jesus, if you had been here sooner, you could have done something. You could have healed him. And Jesus tells them, like, you want me here because you want your brother back. Like, if you get your brother back, right, we always never, like, no matter when someone passes away, even if you'd been expecting it, it still hurts the same. And so Jesus says, like, you wanted me here just because you wanted your brother back, which is understandable. But he's like, but what I have to offer you, he's like, I am the resurrection. I bring with me the power of the resurrection to breathe life not only to your physical bodies but you see resurrection is about breathing life into your spiritual bodies you see we are spiritual beings and God wants to breathe life into you and the Bible says in Romans chapter 6 that if you believe in Jesus if you surrender your life to Jesus the one who has been pursuing you all these years that you then can walk in the newness of life. Like, like, think about this. Whether you have arthritis, whether you have back pain, whether you have shoulder pain, whether you have a disease, whatever it is, sometimes we think to ourselves, like, if I just had a new body, I know on the days when I run more, like, longer miles and, and, and the days are closer to each other, my wife laughs at me because sometimes I'll be trying to walk up the stairs and I'm hobbling. And I'm young, but I run a lot. And so sometimes my knees hurt, my joints hurt, my hips hurt. I know, you guys can laugh from wherever you're sitting. And sometimes I think to myself like, man, I would love to have a new body. Now we may not have new bodies in this world, but Jesus is saying that your spirit can be revived. Your soul can be refreshed because the same power that resurrects Christ is being poured out into your life. And Jesus is inviting you into this new kind of life. So while the resurrection is impossible, it is the power of God who says, yes, it's impossible, but it is through those impossible means, this power, that I am going to begin something new in this world and so the kingdom of heaven becomes something so different. This upside down kingdom is the world in which impossible happens. Not because of what I can do or what you can do, but because the one who flows through us, the one who fills us to overflowing, this God now has allowed this kingdom of God to flourish in ways all over the world. And it may not look like a normal government or kingdom, but it's one that will never end. And so I just want to end with this verse in, John, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 
Paul, who literally would be the first New Testament writer. Like Paul was the first one to start writing about, about what Jesus meant to us, what Jesus is in his theology. Paul says these words. He says, if any one of you is in Christ, if you believe in Christ, if you've accepted this invitation of Jesus, this, you know, the reality is Jesus has been pursuing you your whole life. I believe that without a doubt. I think sometimes by virtue of just how we live our lives, we're just not aware of it. You know, when I fell in love with my wife, and we talk about it all the time, by the way, <laughs> her and I, not to strangers. But one of the things, and, and we'll ask each other, like, well, what was it about me that you loved? And it's one of those things where I didn't have a list. It was just like, like, I just fell in love with you because of who you are. She was irresistible to me. Now, if we fall in love like that as humans, when we're encountered by the living God, it's not a choice anymore. It's that it is, His love, His presence, His spirit is so irresistible that, that even though we say we surrender, it's because we have no other choice. Because His love has drawn us to Him. And so Paul says, if, if, if you're in Christ, if you believe in Him, you are a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Resurrection, it's not just about the future. It's not just about the day when Jesus returns and sets the world to right. It's not just about the day when God renews all things. But resurrection is what you experience when you've, when you've surrendered your life to the one who is the resurrection. You see, the blessing of the resurrection is that it's the blessing of impossible things in your life. Those things that you've given hope on, those things that you've just said, well, I'm just going to wait out my life. God says, no, that God doesn't want you to live a mediocre life. God says, do you not know that the very power that breathes life into existence is breathing life into your soul? Easter, today, tomorrow, what we're celebrating isn't just something that happens 2,000 years ago. What we're celebrating and worshiping and praising and acknowledging and confessing is that God hasn't abandoned us. God is still at work in our lives. He is inviting us into this new kind of life where God is transforming and recreating you. And so even though you feel like you're experiencing death in your life, the promise is that the resurrection is coming. After every death, there is always resurrection. After every ending, there is always a new beginning. And I know that may be hard for us to feel, and even especially now where people say, well, the world is never going to be the same. That's fine. It doesn't have to go back to the way things were. Maybe we'll learn something during this time. But the thing that will remain the same is that the God who breathes life into existence and the God who resurrects Jesus, that same power is available to you today for your spirit and for your soul. If you've been one of those people that you know God has been pursuing you, and maybe for whatever reason you've just not paid attention, I want to share a special prayer for you because I believe that you're listening to this on purpose. And I want to pray a special prayer for you so that you would experience that resurrection. For those of us who have been in the faith for many years, I want to pray a prayer for you as well that we would not forget that the resurrection isn't just for new believers. It's for every single one of us and the daily surrender to this life the daily surrender to the one who is a resurrection actually changes everything for us. Will you bow your heads with me as we pray? Heavenly Father, we are we're speechless in our gratitude for your goodness. To those who are hearing my voice but are actually listening to your spirit in their soul, 
whatever it is that's happened in their lives, whatever decisions have been made, whatever problems have arisen, may your spirit overwhelm them to such a degree that they would know that they are loved, they are forgiven, and that you have been chasing them all along. Give them faith, give them courage, give them grace. For those of us, Father, who maybe have just gone through the motions of faith all these years, may you give us a new resurrection, a small resurrection in our life so that our souls would be realigned to your spirit and your presence and that this weekend wouldn't just be another weekend among many, but that it would be the one that changes the rest of our lives. And so we surrender to you and we entrust our lives to you now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We hope that you have enjoyed and feel blessed by our worship experience, but our experience isn't over. We want to let you know that right now, right after we're done, we're going to be jumping on to our Facebook page, Bolingbrook Church, to have our e-cafe. And so if you want to hang out, if you want to connect a little bit further with community, go ahead and meet us there. So if you're watching on YouTube or on the website, come on over to our Facebook page and join our community there. As always, we want to remind you that the vision of this church has left the building. And we have continued to grow and thrive. And it's because of your continued giving, your continued support, and your continued donations. And so we want to remind you that there are several ways to give. You can give online at bowlingbrook.church slash giving. You can text to give and you can zell quick pay our church at info at bowlingbrook.church. We also want to let you know that you can set up recurring payments. Whatever it is that's on your heart to give, we want to encourage you to do so, so that we can continue to be the church that our community needs. Thank you for joining us this morning, and I'll see you at eCafe.